Steve Prefontaine. Seven-time NCAA champion, American record breaker in events between the 2K and the 5K, and the first runner to ever be signed by Nike. Steve Prefontaine is something of a legend, an icon. Over the course of his short life, he stole the heart of the American running scene. His unique perspective and approach to racing and running pioneered forward a new era of runners, a new approach. And it really changed the perspective that people had on running as a sport and as a lifestyle as a whole. Today, we're going to be doing a deeper dive into the incredible life, the tragic death, and the lasting legacy of Steve Prefontaine. And we're going to do all of this while I draw him for you. So I hope you enjoy and let's get right into it. On January 15th, 1951, Steve Prefontaine was born to Ray and Alfred Prefontaine, two working class citizens who had no idea the future in store for their first son. The family resided in small town Coos Bay, Oregon, where Pre attended Marshfield High School, coached by former Oregon track star Walter McClure. Although Pre was largely off the radar in his early years, he quickly burst into the spotlight with back-to-back -back undefeated junior and senior cross-country seasons, a preview of what was to come. Even more impressively, Pre crushed the previous American high school two-mile record his senior track season. Given his success and his Oregon residence, he quickly garnered the attention of the University of Oregon, with whom he signed on April 29, 1969. From there, Pre's success only continued to climb. Between the fall of 69 and the summer of 74, he would go on to win seven NCAA titles, three repeating his sophomore through senior season in cross country and winning the three mile all four years in track. As an Oregon Duck, he never lost a race more than a mile in length. Upon graduation, he had set nine collegiate track records, eight of which he still held and had also set, or would go on to set, eight American records between the 2K and the 10K. During his career as a whole, he broke or rebroke American records 14 different times, broke the four minute barrier in the mile nine different times, ran sub 840 in the two mile 25 times, and ran 10 sub 13 35 Ks, all in the early 70s, well before most modern training techniques or shoe technology that we take for granted today. Intertwined with his career at Oregon, Pre competed in the 1972 Munich Olympics, an accomplishment which must have been extra special given his mother was a German immigrant. As a 21-year-old, two years younger than anyone else in the field, Pre lined up against the best 5K runners in the world. After leading a fair majority of the race, he was edged out of medal contention in the last lap and finished fourth. But it was perhaps the most powerful fourth place finish ever. You see, while Pre's dominance at the American level played a huge factor in the attention and fame he began to accrue, it was the way he won and his persona that was special. Pre was stubborn, determined, and extremely self-confident, almost arrogant some people would say. He believed in doing things his way, regardless of what other people said or thought. Running wasn't just about being fast, it was about having the guts to be yourself, to stand for something greater. Pre often denounced the way that most runners raced at that time, by sitting back and kicking at the end to steal the race. To him, giving anything less than your best was to sacrifice the gift, as he liked to call it. Running was about pushing yourself to your limits and finding more of what you're capable of. And for him, that meant running out in front flat out until he had nothing left. It's why his fourth place finish in Munich was so memorable. You had this 21 year old kid amongst a field of older competitors, all the best in the world. And despite everything, he went out there and set the tone of the race. But his legacy extended beyond the track as well. As his success grew, he became a huge advocate for athletes' rights, speaking out against the amateur athletic union, and fighting for a better living wage at a time when Olympic hopefuls were not allowed to accept payment for racing. 
It was also this boldness that led him to sign with Nike in 1974, becoming Nike's first runner. His personality became what defined the future vision of the brand, to just do it, to be bold, rebellious, and defiant. A defining theme of the late 60s and early 70s in American culture and politics. Pre was also an ambassador for his sport. He started a running club at the Oregon State Penitentiary, one of the state's oldest prisons. What started as a simple visit for a sociology project quickly became a higher purpose for him because he truly believed that running could change your life. Pre also began to organize races. He organized a five-stop tour in the spring of 1975 that was intended to capitalize on the running boom in the U.S. The last stop of the tour was an NCAA prep meet at the University of Oregon on May 29th. Prefontaine won the 5K and set his final American record with a time of 13 minutes, 23 seconds. However, this would be the last meet Pre ever ran. After the meet, Prefontaine went to a party with other racers and his girlfriend Nancy Alleman. He left the party in his orange MGB convertible around 12.15 a.m., after which his car struck a boulder alongside the road, flipped, and came to rest on top of him. He died before the car could be moved. Pre was just 24 and likely one year out from his second Olympic appearance. We will never know what truly could have come to be in the rest of Pre's career. It was likely to be long and successful. But it is exactly this tragedy that further adds to the legend of Steve Prefontaine and to the history of distance running. It further accentuates the heartbreak of his fourth place finish in the Munich Olympics, as well as his not living to see the passing of legislation just five years later which ended the AAU's hold on track and field and advanced many of the goals that he had advocated for. Despite his early death, Steve Prefontaine is far from gone. The legacy of the former kid from Coos Bay has and continues to ripple through the running culture. Pre created a legacy that pioneered everything from the beginning of the running boom to the birth of Nike and to the solidification of Oregon as the mecca of track and field. He forever changed the course of American distance running and inspired athletes to stand for what they believe in, to be bold, an influence that has come to define not only running, but most modern sports. Just look at any modern day sports advertisement. And this is why Steve Prefontaine is perhaps my favorite athlete of all time. I love his approach to running because it's not simply about winning. Sure, we all want to win. And there was never any doubt about how badly Pre wanted to win. But it's more so about finding more of yourself. About pushing yourself to your limit and then trying to go beyond that. One of my favorite quotes of Pre's is actually centered around exactly this. He said, I'll tell you one thing. There's a breaking point in each race when you wonder if all of the sacrifice is really worth it. You think, why should I do this? I don't have to run this hard. And it is that breaking point that I believe all of us need to face and overcome. It's how we grow, and it's how I believe all of us can become champions in our own respects. <laughs>